Hello, everybody. Can anybody hear me? Great, thank you very much. And as, uh, my name is Alex, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of FinSquad. Um, I'll be your host today. And um, I want to, while we're waiting for everybody, I wanted to uh, briefly introduce, introduce myself and my co-host uh, co today, German Pedrovsky. Uh, so starting with me, I'm, uh, again, I'm Alex. Uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of FinSquad. I've been outsourcing and building the remote teams for the last seven years. And uh, now I'm doing that as an uh, alchemist uh, mentor and also contribute about that to the Forbes Business Council. Uh, about two years ago, I've sold my fintech business to focus on solving problems for demand in tech personnel. And I'm also an angel investor. Uh, so if anyone on this uh, webinar is looking for equity investment, you're welcome to reach me. Uh, I'll hands on to uh, German to introduce himself. And uh, while we're doing that, please can everybody add a plus if you can hear us well. Thank you. I guess I have to do something to let German introduce himself. Just a second. Yep. Yes. yes. Sorry, yeah. everybody, for this delay. It's, I think this is the first time I'm using this software, so it may have some glitches, but I hope it's not going to impede our uh, webinar. Yeah. Hey, guys. I am finally on stage. So my name is German, and uh, I am co-founder and chief marketing officer at InSquad also. And my experience lies mostly in marketing. By here, I am today to uh, introduce you to the cultural differences between the Western culture and the uh, culture of the Indian guys and Indian developers specifically. And uh, I worked uh, with Indian market for three plus years, managed a lot of uh, sales representatives, marketing managers, uh, and uh, also developers all from India. So I will try to um, present some cases of what I learned from, from this experience to you guys. Great, thank you very much, German. Uh, now, before we begin, uh... I'd like to make it a little, a little bit more interactive and ask you a couple of questions in Nepal. Uh, how do you rate your expertise with Indian developers so that we understand a little bit more about our audience? And what is your understanding of quality of India's software development? Let me put this into the, put this into the uh, poll. There you go. We are already starting to get the results. Thank you for your engagement, guys. Okay, so so far uh, we we've got most of most of our audience thinks that Indian developers are great, which is actually interesting. And I'm going to be talking about this a little bit later because this is this is uh, not the common knowledge. Um, and we've got we've got almost no experts in India. Well, this is good. So I hope this is uh, this means that you're going to uh, learn more. This webinar is probably going to be worthwhile. OK, so uh, just a quickly uh, quick overview of what we're going to do today. First, we're going to have some uh, content sessions uh, uh, with the information about working with Indian developers. We're going to have two short Q&A breaks. So uh, any questions that you have in chat, uh, we'll try to cover in these Q&As. We'll promise to answer every question possible. And uh, uh, at the end of the uh, webinar, we'll, have, uh, we'll provide you a link to the cheat sheet on how to deal with Indian developers, which basically 
uh, derives from the current presentation or from our past experience and is going to serve you well in the future so you get the maximum value of this webinar. Thank you very much for joining and let's kick off. Uh, just a few words about InSquad. InSquad uh, grew from my vision that, that great talent is universal, why great opportunity is not. And so this is what InSquad does, help scaling remote development teams fast and efficient. And, and uh, going further. Uh, so why India? Uh, I'd like to start with a simple fact that there are plenty Indian talents that are already working in the US companies. Precisely, there are about 40 Fortune 500 companies that are run by Indians as the CEOs. And we can see here uh, our favorite Elon Musk, or maybe not that favorite, <laughs> uh, confirming that. Uh, and, but still, there is a lot of challenges. Uh, remote, uh, uh, there is a huge time difference. There is a lot of differences in the culture. Uh, so many prefer maybe not to, to go there and to go somewhere out, outsource near shore or maybe even in US. Uh, but what I firmly believe is that Indian talents are underappreciated due to these reasons. And uh, those who learn how to work with them will have a huge unfair advantage uh, going forward. Yeah, and the, and the interesting fact is that um, this Indian development of IT specialists and all these CEOs of giant companies is just because they implemented the uh, chess as mandatory in school. Oh, really? Yeah, that's interesting. They so that probably we should do this in US schools as well, doing chess. It really it actually does a lot to, to you know improve your brain efficiency. OK. So uh, what are we going to cover today? Today is we have pretty packed an agenda, so I'm, hope, I'm hoping to bring a lot of uh, interesting facts to you guys. First, we're going to cover a little bit uh, 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 what's going on in the U.S. Uh, recruitment market uh, in the last uh, few months. Uh, uh, we're going to cover a little bit about India uh, in general. Then we're going to deep dive into sourcing, vetting, and managing the uh, Indian developers. And we're going, to, we're going to continue with the cultural and time zone and other issues that are relevant to working with them. And we'll finish it up with a cheat sheet, the ultimate India hiring guide that we've prepared for you today. Yeah, and I think it will take around one hour of your time. And <laughs> I, will, uh, I will get back to you in, uh, in a fourth, in the third point. So don't lose me, guys. Okay, thank you, German. I'll take it up touch from here. Uh, now, the US tech talent uh, market. I uh, just want to talk a little bit about the demand for developers and how the recent market cooling has affected it. And uh, also, what are we going to see the long term? OK, now, so these are the charts that are showing the numbers uh, for the last two years. And obviously, the market has been red hot until, uh, what is it, March or April. And since then, it has taken a dive. But you see that the market, in terms of job postings in IT, uh, in tech occupation, is still more than double than mid-2020, which actually uh, shows a great resilience in the market. Uh, but getting even to a bigger picture, there is uh, 1 million open IT vacancies in US, uh, which is a quarter of the entire market. So it doesn't seem like you know, the current cooling is going to do a lot of harm to that, does it? Uh, and uh, this is what we've taken from the Department of Labor job outlook. And until 2030, they expect that the market for software developer is going to grow by 22%. Uh, and it, the high demand is all across the board, the testers, analysts, uh, coders. So it's all, all around, right? And... Uh, uh, the, the, the last part I want to show here real quick is that in, you know, in the last 10 years, the market has grown, has, has doubled in the annual uh, job postings, uh, which sort of hints about the size of the market as well. Uh, it's a very high likelihood that the next 10 years is also going to double. So U U.S. demand is obviously off its highs, but the market is still definitely poised to grow further. 
and the huge supply demand gap of 1 million won't be filled quickly. And as a matter of fact, it's probably going to increase. But the good news again is there are lots of developers everywhere, elsewhere. So you can, if you know how to work with them, you're in, in pretty good shape. Uh, now, I'd like to switch a focus to India uh, and discuss a little bit bigger, bigger numbers where India is in the global software development. Uh, talk a little bit about quality of Indian developers and uh, where the comments of our uh, audience today show that the, the quality is so high. Uh, we actually have seen uh, not so good comments, but still. Uh, we'll try to walk you through the reasons why so many U.S. Fortune 500 companies have chosen India for uh, software outsourcing, for software development outsourcing. Now, in the global context, India is number one uh, in terms of developers. Uh, it's got like 20% of the total uh, number of developers uh, in the world. But out of the second nation with the 4.3 million is US, out of which 1 million is again Indians. So Indians have already proven their capacity number-wise, so to speak. Yeah, and so did you guys know that 75 of work visas to the U.S. are Indian developers? Really? 75%? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so where all this, uh, all this uh, knowledge comes from, it's a very simple fact. India has 20 times more uh, IT, develop, uh, IT students than compared to U.S. Now, and India has 4,000. 4,000 colleges that teach only IT specialities, where U.S. has 6,000 in total. So, you know, comparing comparing all the, these numbers, it's pretty. I think it's pretty obvious that uh, India is poised to uh, to become the world IT uh, hub for for a long term. Now, but what about equality? Now, this is a, a very uh, long-term question uh, a lot of I've, I've seen a lot of uh, posts a lot of tweets uh, uh, about the quality of Indian software development that's Indian software developers don't know how to code they don't know they don't do tests they don't do this don't they don't do that but uh, we've tried to analyze where all these comments come from and uh, in my uh, discussions with uh, a lot of uh, companies that work with Indians uh, ultimately, we don't see much of a difference uh, between the developers from India or from other countries and for, uh, from U.S. for that matter as well, because there are just as many good and as many bad developers. I think the only big difference there, there are actually two. Number one is that uh, a lot of these negative comments are actually given by Indian developers. And like you can see that this is a comment, I think, from Aquora or Reddit. And uh, maybe it has to do something to do with their self-confidence or maybe it has to do with their competition, uh, perceived competition between the developers. So uh, in, even our yeah. polls shows that uh, U.S. guys are more fond of Indians than Indians themselves. Oh, yeah. Yeah, probably. Uh, and uh, just like any other nation, they're good or bad. And because there are just so many Indians, because every, you know, 20% of developers in the world are Indian. So the, out of five developers, one must be Indian. Of course, there will be a lot of bad developers. Of course, now this, this, nowadays, this profession is offering uh, uh, good compensation. So a lot of people try to become developer, uh, just like in any other nation. Uh, and uh, with this uh, with these uh, numbers, you would get a lot of uh, pretty lousy developers, just like anywhere else. Uh, and one thing I uh, just wanted to mention: generalizing is always a bad idea. Uh, it, it, saying that they are either all good or all bad is probably never is very accurate. Uh, and I think it's a better, the better approach is to learn how to find the quality guys to, to beat the competition. And this guy here just confirmed my, my thought. Now jumping to the, to the uh, financial numbers, right? Uh, the rates in India uh, start as low as 15,000 a year or like $8 or something an hour, which is super cheap compared to what you get in, in uh, Europe or in US. But for that number, you probably wouldn't get a good developer. You probably would get that developer that you wouldn't be happy with. 
and uh, end up with the you know, negative comment. Uh, the developers that uh, we work for, uh, we work with, sorry, uh, and we've seen uh, performing well, they're typically in a range of 30 to 50K a year, uh, which is 20, 30 bucks a year, which is still half of what US, uh, uh, medium US developer does. And they do pretty good quality at that price range. So we, we, advice not to try to work with the juniors that are paid 15k and and uh, be, don't become a statistic here uh now yeah just a slide to confirm that really because of there are so many developers in india and because they're uh they are uh relatively cheap they're about 80 percent of us companies rank india number one in statistics we got some research is done and half of Fortune 500 do outsource in India, so it seems like a you know pretty safe bet to assume if they have tried and tested it, it it, it is probably worthwhile trying. Uh, to conclude with India's action, I personally think India is super positioned to with a higher number of developers, lower costs, better English than all of other regions to head for IT market dominance. And hence, we are uh, improving our efforts to source developers in India because we see a lot of quality guys there. Now, it's uh, maybe getting from this helicopter view uh, down, down to the uh, to the you know hard part. Okay, the big numbers are good, but how to do it yourself, right? How to get the to in quality Indian developer? And in this section, I'd like to walk you through. Uh, the, the the basic uh, interview process and what to do's and don'ts and what to expect of candidates on interview and thereafter. Uh, so basically, the hiring and management process can be split down in three parts. As I see it, how do you source? Uh, do it yourself with a with a recruiter. Uh, where to go to 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 source, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, how to vet? Now this is a hard part, and the hard, how to manage? This is probably the hardest of all, uh, and it's going to be covered by my my colleague German, who's been living the, with Indian, working with Indians for the last few years. Uh, and it's important to know that each one of these parts is critically important for ultimate success. So I'll try to walk you through in the next ten minutes with that. Uh, now, just some quick facts about sourcing in India. Over half of Indians, according to the polls, they're happy to switch a job for to a better paying job or to a better otherwise job. And uh, a lot of uh, a lot of times Indians are looking to get a job with the U.S. company because they like U.S. practices, business practices. Uh, India, the second largest speaking English speaking nation, although the, the accent is quite often very important because I've I've met a lot of Indians that I couldn't understand a word, even though they pretended they spoke English. Uh, they're just one time zone. They they work for eight hours a week, which is a you know above everybody else, but still. An important point here is that the Indian notice period uh, when the when the Indian developer wants to leave a job, typically from thirty to ninety days, and it's important to keep in mind that you know if you want to get a good developer and you have have to have him next week you probably don't want to uh, you that's the first thing you have to ask because not all the companies do that but a lot of them do require the developer to stay for 90 days or so uh, there are cases when you can uh, buy him out or negotiate with the manager but these are probably not something you should count on off the bat. yes sir again. And not to scare you off here, right? So that, because we already have the questions in the chat. Uh, this notice period, on average, it would be something like one and a half months, I think, right? So 90 days is a little bit extreme. Yeah, yeah, that's just like some of them do, but it, it's more often it's like 30 to 40 days. Uh, sourcing is pretty similar to US. Uh, um, there is a you know, there is a, indeed in India there's Glassdoor. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of developers in GitHub and, and other platforms. And uh, but majority of the sourcing we uh, we've seen and we've seen our developers t telling us about is in LinkedIn. So it's pretty similar. Uh, but if you want to be 
you know, hardcore, you want to go and try the local job boards. Uh, we had bad experience. Uh, we had comments from bad experience from other companies uh, that we work with because typically they are uh, Indian job boards are uh, solely for Indians. They require Indian phone number. They want Indian you to have Indian legal entity. So it's it's definitely not worthwhile trying. Uh, let me let me check the questions so far in the chat so that we could you know sort of have it more interactive. Yeah, so actually we do have a few questions and I can read them out for you. So okay, that's fine. Uh, I got here. Uh, there is a question from Andy. Uh, thank you for the question. So um, why do we consider only India and not the whole uh, Pan-Asian region? Well, I, India sort of stands out. Uh, if we're talking about other uh, areas, there is Pakistan. They actually do have a lot of good developers as well there. Uh, and it's pretty much similar in terms of the culture. They are a little bit cheaper, but there are a whole lot of other countries uh, in terms of in the, in the Pan-Asian that are st strategically different. Like, for example, Chinese. Chinese are super, super smart, super intelligent, but it's... Uh, in terms of uh, when it comes to working with them, uh, our experience has been uh, much less comfortable than when you work with uh, guys from India or from even from Pakistan. And there are obviously there are other countries like Nepal and, and others, but they're just not as significant. And uh, uh, a lot of things that I'm talking here now are relevant to those countries as well, but probably to a lesser extent. Yeah, thank you, Alex. And uh, we do have questions uh, from the bottom of our chat here. So uh, Matthew is concerned about this uh, huge notice period. So he is asking are there any ways to avoid it? Because even 30 days yeah, is a large period. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I think, uh, well, it's important to, to when, when you start negotiating, this is important to, to discuss. Uh, the, we've had issues when when uh, uh, our client was able to negotiate with the management of the current employer, uh, a lowering lower the lower the date, but uh, as per se, yes, this is this is something that you have to deal with. Although a lot of Indian these days they work on a contract, uh, meaning that it's not a full time employment, meaning that they can re, uh, break it up, you know, pretty pretty fast. So this is something to consider. Uh, I don't think this is too too many of our clients. This hasn't been a, a, a huge experience. Yeah, and well, I would say that um, you know it, it's subjective, so it seems large as a notice period. But you know the average time to hire a, a U.S. developer, for example, a senior one, is uh, more than three months, right? So if you'd be able to uh, make an offer for an Indian developer in uh, in a few weeks for example in three weeks it would still be much faster but with the in, with oh yeah yeah that's true so matthew sorry uh <laughs> sorry if it didn't help that much um well then let's yeah, continue uh, we do have a question from mark it's just a clarification right uh indian job boards do indeed require you to have an uh, Indian legal entity because you know phone number you can get but legal entity is uh, it requires subject uh, and you know that's the case with uh, a lot of countries actually not only India but so, yeah we would so you know thank God for LinkedIn that is uh, universal pretty much yeah we had we tried to register we even you know had a, a phone number but with the, they actually call you and start talking to you so it's it's a very it's a very slow process uh and um i don't know we didn't have any good experience there okay uh getting to the uh actually 30 to 90 days notice period is a part of a cultural difference that we're gonna uh we're gonna be discussing next uh, and uh, first, I'd start, start with vetting and uh, what's important to do and do, not to do when, when vetting. Uh, when I'm talking about vetting, of course, the, the, the hardest part and probably the 
uh, the, the first part is probably not the hardest, but the first part is technical vetting. Uh, and um, and uh, uh, there it's always, you know, it's always good to, uh, to get prepared, to get yourself prepared and think what you need the developer for. If you are looking for a developer for short term, you are most likely uh, need to first to vet the hard skills and you uh, care less about the culture because if, if you have a project for two or three months or not that not that long it doesn't really matter uh, if we're talking about longer term you look a lot into the culture fit their values their openness how they're ready to adjust to your culture and so forth so advice in terms uh, our good advice in terms in terms of um, uh, uh, questions on the interview it's always ask open-ended questions uh, always be specific uh, and of course uh, if you are not able to do the technical vetting yourself you have to have technical uh, somebody technical with expertise on on your side it's I wouldn't trust uh, uh, going to the to for an interview with Indian developer without technical expertise reference uh, uh, it never hurts I I although ha have never heard the good or, or bad reference but it still adds a lot of color to what exactly has developer done on, on each position well that's because nobody is given by the references right and, yeah well that, that, that's true and in india it, it's uh, much more true because indians are very you know very fond of their culture and their peers right so they never will uh, disrespect their colleague like that uh, but you know there is a trick to uh, referencing. So uh, rather than asking, uh, you know, would you hire this person again, for example, or something like this, would you uh, advise me to hire this person? You can ask, okay, so I, I'm ready to hire uh, this guy who worked previously with you, right? And I want him to uh, go through some educational courses. So what would you suggest here? So, uh, you know, what skills does he need to upgrade here? And then you know all the all shit hits the fan, so to speak. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, one important question is how to get avoided uh, getting trapped by uh, overinflating skills. Overinflation that we've seen uh, across the board everywhere. It's it's not an India specific story, so it's pretty much uh, universal. And uh, we ad we uh, ad address this issue by uh, you know asking the candidates to do live cast uh, live coding, and to solve a real problem. So this it's important. It may be even not as important whether the candidate has successfully solved the problem, but you can see how the candidate thinks because uh, when 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 you're trying to hire a developer, you you need to have somebody who can solve the problems and maybe not as important that he has all the knowledge because it's knowledge is easier to tra transfer right if you're hiring somebody for a longer term you can expect that the person get will you know get up to speed and will maybe fix some uh some deficiencies in in knowledge but definitely you will not be able to adjust the way the person thinks yeah and by uh, the way, i think we uh, we forgot our second poll here oh yeah, actually, thank you very much. And uh, to to get a little bit more interactive here, uh, here is the question: uh, What what is the most common advice when managing Indian developer? There it is. Can you guys share your opinion, please? Yeah, I think we can we can go further a little bit here. Okay, so yeah. Now then, uh, Yermin, I'll let you jump in here. Yeah, thanks. So uh, that would be, you know, let me present the last slide here in the vetting process, right? Uh, so I will take the mic here going forward because we are deep in our toes into, you know, the cultural stuff. So, um, you know, the questions that you see here are uh, pretty general. The ones you see on the left are the classic uh, projective questions. Uh, so they are 
uh, asked to so the person will you know detach himself from the question and answer truthfully so there is a, one another way for you to uh, fight with overselling so uh, these things uh, do not necessarily relate with indian developers it's uh, you know for us guys as well uh, so for example if you are asking a person uh, to describe the, what is a great programmer for them so they will describe what they think is important right in terms of programming and you can judge from there and uh, towards experience you know it's uh, the same old stuff so for example uh, the question of what did the development sprint look like and what was your role and the second the latter part is very crucial here right because in development uh, and in other professions in competitive markets guys are saying like yeah work with this and, and that but in reality, if you dig uh, deeper in what they were actually doing, uh, they were just juniors at the time, or they were just uh, helping with the project management or with just uh, minor tasks or something like this. So, you know, take these questions to your, to your next interviewing list. But yeah, but it's important to add, although that is, this is not only for Indians, definitely, because I've seen, you know, I've seen some interviews with the guys in US that that went the same scenario so it's a universal yeah and from the same point of you know culture fit and all these things uh when you hire an, an indian guy uh, you'd be much better off left uh, with the person who already worked with uh in you know in western startups so out of india right because uh, he's ma much more um you know uh, emotionally into communication with us guys for example and you know you will skip the the cultural and boarding part at least you know half of it so let's go okay so now we are going to um you know cultural features of uh, indian guys and their implementations to management of you know, uh, every Indian worker, not necessarily a developer, because, you know, they're pretty uh, similar in that regard, culturally. So um, here I will, uh, you know, tell you about a few things that is worth mentioning. And uh, the important part here is that uh, a lot of these things uh, will seem very detrimental to the efficiency of your workflow, right? uh but that's not you know to scare you off because uh indian developers and indian guys in general have a lot of uh, cool cultural features they are very flexible in their mindset they are very diligent and hard working and uh most of all they uh, educate themselves pretty fast you know as they say if you stumble upon some uh, post on reddit on github with some uh, coding guide it must have been written by some guy in bangalore um, so uh, why i am talking about this because exactly is because i want you to uh, understand them you know to respect the culture but still to find some compromise and learn how to work together right so uh, let me briefly describe each of them for you and well uh, we will go into detail and into practical advice here so uh, first thing is hierarchy and subordination it's uh, very deeply embedded in indian culture and in that sense you cannot expect you know horizontal communication as uh, we see it in europe or in us so uh, you as a manager and your indian subordinate are not on the same level right and that means uh, there would be a lot of micromanagement for example and that's only one of them uh, so second thing is status so indian guys uh, are very social because you know it's very hard not to be then there are a ton of you in your country and uh, in that regard they are uh, deeply concerned about uh, how their friends their colleagues their peers their managers view them at work and uh, at home right and um, it can result uh, in that uh, it's not very easy to gain or give feedback to an indian person 
The third thing is about communication. Uh, Indian culture is a high context culture, right? And that means that uh, you can just take you know, literal meaning of uh, words that come in of uh, Indian guy's mouth, because there is also a body language, there is mimics, there is a different bit, difference between your statuses, there is emotion and much, much more to what he's trying to say, actually. And the fourth thing is uh, deadlines. And uh, in India, in Indian's uh, religion and Indian's culture, uh, or even Indian's life in religion, everything is in cycle, right? And in that sense, you know, in generalizing and exaggerating it a little bit, uh, if you say the deadline is on Thursday, it could be Thursday one year after this Thursday or, or in another life for that matter. Still an exaggeration at some point. But uh, there is one uh, thing that uh, is very important here that um, Indian guys are very fond of their friends, family. Uh, they, uh, you know, uh, respect them and uh, love them with all their hearts, so to speak. And if you will be able to build a strong relationship with your Indian subordinates, you will be able, you know, to uh, actually negate all the previous problems that I mentioned. So let's go further and see where it takes us. Yeah. So, uh, so if you are, if you make friends with your Indian colleague, then he can manage all the deadlines. Is that what you're saying? Uh, at least your communication will be uh, much more clear on that point. So a lot of these okay. things are about communication. That's the hard part in cultural differences, right? And then you are friends with someone, you know, you can find compromise always okay okay so let's uh, dive a little deeper and go you know to the practical advice here so um, first of all let's address, address hierarchy and subordination so as you may know in India uh, in the past caste system was very prominent and still even nowadays unfortunately in some parts of India is it's still so and um, in that regard, uh, Indians are very respectful of their elders, of their superiors, and of their managers. To give you an example, in US, uh, children is encouraged to ask questions of uh, a teacher at school. And in India, it is considered somewhat uh, disrespectful. So what does it mean in a work, uh, work ethic sense? So, um, if not said otherwise, Indian person presumes that their manager uh, knows everything, right? So, uh, he or she will not ask any unnecessary questions if, because, you know, they were not asked to ask these questions, right? Uh, and uh, there are a lot of, you know, aspects to this, and uh, this is only the first one. Uh, the second one would be that um, Indian guys are overly polite with their uh, managers to the point that they will uh, actually intentionally somewhat mislead you to not disappoint you, right? And, uh, you know, if the deadlines are burning or uh, your project at at stake, that's very dangerous miscommunication there. Uh, so uh, what should you do in this regard? Uh, you should ask more questions. So in our poll, uh, you said that most common advice would be to ask open-ended questions. And actually you were right, you were on point with this one, because it's not only about subordination, it's about, you know, communication. So communication is a problem. The answer is better communication, right? Uh, so, ask uh, more open-ended questions from different perspective written or in meetings and will and eventually you will get the truthful answer and uh, you know the one minor other thing here is that um, if you want to get a feedback from an indian person um, you will get a polite answer here right uh, so uh, you should just delegate asking these questions to their peers, 
right? It sounds very strange for uh, for our Western culture, but uh, in India, it's uh, you know it's the norm. How does it work? Can you maybe give an example how to ask with a peer so that guys here understand better? Yes, yeah, so you know you have uh, two developers and you want to ask one of them uh, what do you think about uh, our work processes for example and uh, you ask the second one to ask this question to the third developer you know it's uh, uh, asking for the third party is uh, not very convenient but it still will get you results Oh, uh, the other the other path here would be to uh, meet offline, and in this you know in this recreational environment, the answers you will get uh, will be much more truthful too. So it's actually so the advice would be if you hop on the Zoom and you have for example a team of two or three developers, and you ask before the Zoom, you ask some one of the developers to raise this question. So it's not raised by you, and then you will expect a, a more, uh, a more uh, close to the reality, so to speak, answer. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So let's go. Uh, so and the other aspect to this uh, subordination thing is productivity and management. So uh, once again, Indian person believes that you as the manager. Uh, not only you know anything, you can control anything, right? And well, you can, right, with micromanagement, and it's not seen as something unusual or something uh, bad in India, right? Um, so nobody will throw stones at you at this point. But uh, if you are hiring a senior developer, uh, you probably expect them to be proactive, to be, you know, uh, independent uh, to get the work going right and in this regard uh, you know the answer is easy how to achieve that you just uh, need to tell the uh, developer in question that he is now responsible for this area right that uh, he is now responsible for all the tasks all the ideation for this project and uh, this communication must be in written form. Uh, and uh, because, you know, uh, something that is written is not so highly in context, right? That's something that is just said. And the important thing here is that if you are given an Indian guy uh, in the team of Indian developers a uh, new responsibility, uh, you should let all the guys know about it. Uh, why you will learn on this on the following slide uh, but uh, there is <laughs> uh, wait a second here Alex um, so the second most useful advice of all I think here uh, if you want productivity you you should just encourage productivity right in an organized fashion so for example uh, you can do uh, brainstorms, several of them, then um, guys will will have, you know, an environment to present their ideas, to discuss them, and you should praise them for it. And uh, then, you know, you should start implementing these questions about new ideas in your regular meetings. Uh, once I had a sales team lead, um, I was working with this, uh, you know, framework, um and after one of the brainstorms i got an email from him with 50 ideas about valuable ideas about how to grow our business he was just keeping it to himself because once again he thinks that i knew everything but i didn't unfortunately wow 50. <laughs> did you actually implement any of those yeah yeah like maybe 10 or 15. Wow, cool. Okay, so now to the status. So uh, status is the greatest motivator. Uh, I can, you know, to, uh, to make an example here, I was working with an ad tech startup in India. We were actually uh, educating guys to become developers and uh, their pain was, and they were all, you know, on the same page, on the same page here. 
uh, they were saying like, uh, I want to become an IT professional because I have this friend. Uh, we are friends since school or university, and I see how successful he is. And I want to be successful too. Or another example, um, Indians have this uh, celebration that is called Diwali, uh, celebration of light and knowledge. And in Diwali, it's uh, uh, all the guys uh, want to bring presents to their families, to their women, uh, specifically, and these presents are mostly gold. Uh, and uh, guys were saying to us like, uh, Diwali is uh, coming and once again this year I can't afford to, you know, to put this gold on the table for my family. So the status is very important thing in India and uh, it's the greatest motivator. Uh, so uh, what should you do in this regard? Um, first of all, you should present opportunities for career growth if there is any. Right? Because if there is, the developer would be much more motivated. And if you want to criticize someone, or give them, you know, uh, some harsh feedback, you should do it, uh, you know, in a personal discussion, not in front of everybody. Because you remember uh, about hierarchy and subordination. If you will criticize someone, their, you know, social score will decrease in front of everyone. Unnecessarily. And, uh, you know, the opposite of this, if you want to praise someone, praise them in public. And do so more often. Let's go. Okay. So we're nearing the end of my uh, cultural pitch here. So uh, the next thing is um, about communication. The one of most important things here actually, and why it's, uh, why it's so hard for us to communicate with Indian guys. Um, let's take, for example, you know, Europe or Russia, any such country. We are uh, pretty much straightforward guys, right? So uh, we are speaking something and we mean exactly or close to what we actually said, right? And in India, there is whole, you know, art to that. Body language, uh, mimics, uh, and, you know, statuses of guys discussing uh, something in question and so on. Uh, so, uh, first of all, use body language in, uh, in your communication with Indian guys. So, express yourself. Smile if you are happy and frown if you are not. Uh, I once uh, saw a guy who uh, didn't believe their, uh, didn't believe his uh, manager uh, that he was fired just because his manager wasn't, you know, expressing enough uh, of his disappointment on this call. So on the next day, he was asking, like, am I really fired? You weren't that disappointed in me, <laughs> at least in your face, uh, in, in the facial expression. Okay, and you know, the, the biggest example of this high context is uh, the yes or no questions. So that's why we are talking about this, um, uh, about this uh, ask open-ended question thing. So guys, uh, can you hear me now? So tell me in the chat, yeah? Okay. Because Alex seems to lost his connection. Okay, I don't know. I don't think I would be able to slide the slides for you, actually. But let's see if he will, you know, uh, re regain his connection here. Okay. So, uh, yes does not mean yes in, you know, in Indian culture. It means that I uh, respect that you are saying, I respect you. I understand the importance of what you are saying, right? I will do everything in my uh, powers to get it done. But it still doesn't mean, yes, it would be done. So in this regard, you should always, uh, once again, ask open-ended questions from different perspectives to see if yes is actually a yes, or is it, you know, uh, just an excuse for something else. Because once again, yes is polite, right? And Indians do not want to be disrespectful in any way. 
or impolite for that matter. And of course, you know, the usual, uh, usual thing here would be to ask the person to uh, summarize in a follow-up, once again, in a written form. Okay, so Alex, are you here with us now? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I got disconnected. Can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. this time. And I think everybody else too. Okay, great. Okay, we can go forward with the slides. Thank you. So uh, that's one, one other story. So uh, that's an email. Hi, Andrea. Uh, I'm sorry, unable to attend uh, tomorrow's workshops. Suffering from terrible stomach ache. Um, attached is the presentation that I would have made had I been able to attend your session. There was no presentation. No, this is crazy. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> Of course, once again, it's, uh, you know, generalization and exaggeration case, uh, but still. Uh, so it's very, once again, it's very important for them to show that they wanted to help you, right? And they respect you. And you should, you know, uh, okay. So, no, no, it's okay. Okay. So, okay. Uh, I told you that uh, if you would uh, build relationship with Indian guys, you would be able to, you know, avert, negate all these uh, problems, uh, you know, to some extent, at least, right? So uh, Indians behave very different, differently with their friends than with their uh, managers, you know, since subordination and stuff. Uh, but if you will be interested in employees life, uh, mainly his friends, his family, his interests and hobbies, right? Uh, you will build a strong relationships and maybe even meet uh, guys offline for some recreational activities or even online. For example, once we had an online uh, dance-off with the actual DJ in Zoom with Indian guys. Uh, and then will you, uh, then you will, you know, uh, reach this level of friendship or close to it, you will be able, like friends, uh, dis communicate more clearly, discuss cultural differences, but, you know, still you must respect them. Uh, for example, uh, for Indian guides, if uh, their favorite Bollywood star, for example, died today, uh, they are, you know, obliged to have a uh, sick day, a day off because you know they are traumatized by this event it's very strange for us here but in india you know you can you should uh, give them this chance because it's natural for them okay so do we have another slide here for me uh and that's that's for deadlines so that's my uh, last slide i believe for you guys here uh, and then I will give the mic to Alex. So uh, deadlines, you know, it's the general problem. It's just multiplied by miscommunication, right? Uh, and this high context culture. So what should you do with deadlines? You should be very specific about uh, when deadline will be. Why is that important? Uh, for example, maybe a work of other developers, other guys are dependent upon this deadline, you should get uh, regular updates, uh, but watch out for excuses. So excuses, once again, in general, on average is okay in Indian culture. Uh, and if they say something like, uh, I am sick, I uh, must have a day off, or I am working too much or something like this, it actually may be true. And that means that the deadline would, would not be met this time. And uh, do not expect, you know, that pushing will solve this problem. A lot of Indian guys are very fond of work-life balance and pushing will always result in, you know, in even more deadlines missed. So, you know, you should, as a, as a good manager, just uh, calculate your capacity here accordingly and can you uh if you are friends with an indian guy can you push them then or will you be able to do that uh, 
Well, I think yes, but you know, as with every relationship, it has its limits, right? So I wouldn't advise you to actually, I wouldn't advise you to push anybody to work, you know, to overwork in any, in any culture and any environment. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's move forward. There is a one big, big story about time zone management. I'll try to be brief because we're almost, almost through one, one hour that we've booked. Um, now time zone may seem as an obvious blocker here uh, and i've often heard you know that we cannot work with the different time zones but the reality is how much time do you need to communicate with your team i mean do you really need all these eight hours to be to to be your team with your team online and the reality is that more often than not the time that you actually need to be online with the team is not that great not that a lot uh few uh, for the first few weeks when you when you only start to to get get on pace it may it may be important to be in in two or three hours maybe even four four hours overlap uh however as your team uh, gets up the speed and improves the pace you need less time it's it's really not that you know you not that important to to be online all the time you can do a, a one hour sync or maybe maybe even less maybe not even every day uh, it really depends on, on your team composition and you know how 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 well you bond, how well you how well did you make friends with your Indian developers. Now below there are a few simple tips to avoid getting into the time zone traps and some interesting bits, instruments to ease the calibration. And uh, just to comment that the best performing teams I've have seen uh, they all lived in remote in async mode. Okay uh now challenges few obvious challenges here uh collaboration co co is complicated uh work you feel isolated you know you don't have time boundaries and you and you have uh problems in setting up meetings so i'll, I'll skim through because uh, all this is going to be in the in the in the ultimate hiring guide so you will be able to to get this information in details uh with the time zones set, setting time boundaries is important now many when i mean setting time boundaries it's also important for yourself that you know that you are not accessible outside these time boundaries and likewise respect uh you, our, your colleagues and do not try to communicate with them outside the time boundaries that they have set up and that everybody communicates them clearly and uh, what also hel helps a lot is creating a team communication playbook you know what uh, where do we uh, chat in uh, on uh, business issues where we chat on work issues where we chat on personal issues how what task tracking uh, system we use uh you know, where do we use what software we use for meetings uh where we keep our working data and so on and so forth it's really not that complicated uh important important notes about async communication if if you haven't uh, stumbled upon them yet first and foremost don't expect immediate reply right you send a text uh, right now you can get response in six hours and that's and that's okay now uh, when you uh, do uh, asynchronous communication you always plan ahead right you 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 take an account that the fact that when you're you're talking to somebody they may be asleep at this time uh, and uh, before you send message, you you ask yourself, does he, my recipient has everything they need to to complete the next step? Is there anything I can attach to help them to do this, so that they don't, you know? And uh, the, does my recipient have access to the to the information that I'm sharing, so they you don't get trapped in the fact that you know I've sent like almost everything, but I I've forgotten just one little thing, and that's why. I went to sleep and my colleague in India woke up and he couldn't get access to the data and, and that's why he stopped. Uh, so it's it's really not, you know, there's just a little playbook you 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 make up and live by these rules and just works just fine. Uh, of course, if there sometimes need to be a synchronous communication, you know, sometimes you, you would want to have it once a week, sometimes you would want to have it once a day, but uh, I'd say most often than not, it's not that not that often uh once a week is uh, almost always you know good for a long long call uh although you could do it every day for like half an hour an hour or so 
uh, and it's all the, the fact there is that it's always going to be inconvenient for somebody. Somebody will have to stay up uh, later or work, work, uh, stay up early or, or work late. And this, you know, has to be taken into account. Uh, and there are a couple of tools that you could use to not to to mix the the meeting uh, time zones. Uh, we use World Time Body uh, or Time IS, which which show you the uh, days and times uh, in different time zones. This is how it looks like. Uh, so ultimately, working in different time zones is more of a habit that you have to get used to. And uh, by improving communication and increasing team speed. Uh, having sync uh, async communication playbook, you can set it up neat, neatly in, I'd say, four to six weeks. So this is this is pretty straightforward. Uh, uh, now, questions so far? Because we're almost through the, our, our schedule. Do we have any? Yeah, we do, actually. So thanks once again for all your questions, guys, and for, you know, for being, for being active in the chat. So... Um, we had a question from you know from uh, half an hour ago um, that that the Indian jobs job boards that we mentioned are not that in hype with the tech community. That's not much of a question, but still, I think that. Well, it's like, I guess a comment. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I have the question from. Okay. Yeah, I'd say that you know. Um, job board is still not the, the greatest tool for hiring senior developers, you know, in any country, because uh, um, senior developers are pretty much all employed because, you know, everybody needs them, right? And they are not so much checking the job boards as they're, you know, just waiting for this up upcoming avalanche of inbound offers that they're getting every day in LinkedIn, for example. And um, as far as we know, a lot of Indian developers are just checking communities and get referrals. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm just skimming through the, the questions here. Uh, there, there's a question about the time difference. I think that it all is a matter of habit. I mean, after I set up uh, this World Time Guru software, it was pretty much straightforward, and and you know, in two weeks I got used to that. So it's, I don't think I mean, it may may be more complicated for some people than the other, but I generally don't think it's it's too much of an issue here. Um, it's, you know, connected to the question of Matthew of what system or tool to use for communication for time management, right? So uh, I think that um, you, you shouldn't be confused with time zones because you do uh, you shouldn't be thinking about them, right? So there are a lot of tools that automate these things, uh, automate these things. So for example, if you are working this uh, with Slack, there is a space time. Uh, the, which shows you, you know, everybody's availability. Uh, there is Calendly, for example, with, uh, you know, uh, where you can see everybody availability and so on and so on. So there are actually, you know, hundreds of tools here. Yeah. Uh, and the, the, the last question I wanted to, to cover and, and go on because uh, we're, you know, we're past the schedule. Uh, payment is actually, you know, there are so many systems these days that it's probably not that big of an issue. Uh, there, there's a uh, remote, there's uh, uh, you can do a PayPal. I mean, there's, you know, you could even do a direct a wire from US bank. If you do it, have if you have an Indian uh, developer on the contract, it really is pretty, pretty straightforward. We don't, don't actually see that this too much of an issue. And again, if you're hiring a developer with a contract, you don't, you're not responsible for his uh, taxes or anything. This is, uh, the, this gets your project your uh, uh, problem solved. Uh, as for a salary range, I think I've covered it before, but you can just repeat the, the, the developers that we work with, they make on average 30 to 50K a, a year. Uh, so it's about, uh, what is it? Uh, 20 to $30 a, dollars an, uh, an hour. This is a pretty, pretty standard we've found, you know, we, I have never personally found um, a super, uh, super talented Indian below this below these uh, numbers. Okay. Now so, can we jump? 
Yeah. yeah, I think we do have several questions for our services, right? And we can, you know, answer them later, right? But we have one question. Uh, uh, is it right to pay so much attention to employees' life? Uh, and I would answer yes, because, you know, uh, developers, uh, senior developers are very competitive market. And uh, after the management comes engagement, right? So how do you, you know, partner with this development for a long time? And if you are not interested in him as a person, you should have, you know, you should be Google, right? To just still engage him. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's definitely, I think if you're looking for, to hire a long-term uh, developer for a long-term, that's definitely, you have to think about how your, you know, culture uh, fits with with, the, with his culture as well. And I think it's, it's, it's the same process vice versa i mean the indian developer will also look at your culture and will also try to observe it um let me jump uh, go further uh a few quick facts about in squad we, you know we we do curate it we do vetted senior talents uh on our website you can find them all we we, we take them uh from uh, the, the various countries 20 actually 20 plus countries these days do have a lot of them in India. We then vet them for a long, for for a lot of time, three hours with algorithms, live coding, and recorded video, and so forth. And then, uh, uh, and then we cover all the legal and tax and other issues there. Uh, so the benefit that we are offering is uh, our clients usually get seventy five percent plus interview to hire ratio, so they don't spend too much time on hiring, and typically get a client developers in under two weeks. I think this is it. Uh, I'm getting closer to the end, and thank you for your participation and and you know uh, being with us for this hour. I wanted to uh, give you this special offer. Uh, you can uh, there is a QR QA code, and I think I'm going to try to get it. Uh, yeah, I think you must have a special offer. If you click on it, uh, you could do either book a demo with us and and check the platform or you could get a free uh free advisory session on on uh um, sc on scaling your remote development team and this is uh this is pretty much it for today it has been a pleasure to have you all here and i hope you found this webinar useful you can connect with me on linkedin and i will send you the india ultimate hiring guide Here's the QR code, or you can email me, or uh, and and you will get it. Uh, and uh, I think we've tried to put as much information about the culture and and other issues aspect relating to the hiring developers as possible. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, and you all have a great day. Thank you for being with us. Yeah, thank you guys. Have a great day. Okay.